Hello, Galaxy. I'm Chris Perillo, and I wanted to take a few moments to dive a little deeper into my response to a question that seems to be quite common. It comes up in comments in just about every video that I've done recently, including the live videos that I'm streaming in the other YouTube channel, youtube.com slash LockerGnome, where the Locker Gnome Daily Report, or TLDR for short, is happening live every weekday and possibly even on the weekends. Uh, hopefully you're subscribed to both channels and you have notifications turned on for new videos for both of those channels. Uh, it's a simple question. Is Apple doomed with Tim Cook as CEO? My response? Not in the near term. The long term is a little fuzzy. I'm not here to say that Tim Cook's been doing a bad job. In fact, I, I think he's been doing as good a job as anybody could do. He's very well suited for his role at Apple. Uh, I'm not here to say that Tim Cook is the absolute worst CEO that Apple's ever seen, because uh, I don't think that is accurate. Um, it's just that Apple is certainly different, and Apple continues to make money. It's driving revenue. People are buying products. Uh, you know, it's it's definitely got brand value in the marketplace. Uh, it, it's not going to disappear anytime soon. Uh, it, it's got that momentum, but I think that is part of the problem. It has that momentum, and for the most part, Apple is resting on that momentum, that cultural value, the cachet that comes with the Apple brand. So when I see people effectively, uh, uh, you know, screaming for Tim Cook to resign, uh, I'm not sure if I think that's th the best way to handle a situation as I see it unfolding. And, and for the most part, I, I got to tell you, uh, I I've seen quite a few people, not everybody, uh, see things the same way that I see things in relation to where we see Apple going compared to where it was. Mind you, I, I have not always been a fan of what Apple was doing. Uh, it, it really wasn't uh, until uh, the, uh, uh, I guess, the, the advent of the iPhone, uh, specifically how it uh, drew me in to effectively having more of an Apple device lifestyle, as I was already using a Mac at that point. The Mac was not enough of a gateway device in terms of a, a drug, uh, the addiction, you know, <gasps> gotta have my phone! Uh, I don't know, did you know that nomophobia was a thing? It was, even back in the day, uh, back when uh, phones were used as phones. The, uh, <laughs> the, the phone, of course, has become its flagship de device, not just, you know, a flagship model, which would be the latest model that Apple might release, but the iPhone has for the most part, made Apple, despite it having a variety of other products, which are complementary to it. Apple has certainly run into issues uh, with other product lines, uh, them not taking off or the, the, them uh, not being upgraded in a regular cycle. Uh, iPads, an iOS device, uh, don't necessarily get upgraded all that often. I, I know plenty of people who still have old iPads, and for the most part, iOS issues notwithstanding, they still work. They still function. In fact, I don't think it's a bad thing anymore. If you have an iPad that's so old, it can't be updated to anything beyond iOS 6. <laughs> that's, that's probably a premium product at this point. So, uh, you know, Apple's doing well. It's the question of, are they going to be able to continue to do well? And I, I, I think... Eventually, the market will change. I think we're, we're starting to feel a bit of how Apple has changed now. Uh, these are, you know, almost pains, I guess, you know, in, in relation to what we knew this company could do for us as users of, of the products that they produce uh, and, and what they're doing now specifically in relation to uh, their contemporaries. And, and unfortunately, what used to set Apple apart no longer sets Apple apart. It's uh, uh, definitely not a, a leader in design anymore, that's for sure. Um, and if you're interested in, uh, you know, a, a, a piece to, to support that thesis, uh, Joshua Topolsky over on the outline just published something yesterday, and I think the headline was pretty much, Apple doesn't know design, or Apple has really bad design. Um, and that's true. It's just, it's it's empirically true, whether or not you care to see it, whether or not you care to agree. Uh, it is just demonstrably true in software and now in, in hardware. So they've got enough money, 
they, they, they're sitting on so much money. I mean, they could buy competition. They could R&D themselves out of this hole. But I believe that it's, it's a leadership issue. And I don't just mean in relation to the CEO. I'm talking about uh, the entire executive team, which, again, has brought us this far. But it seems that a few of those people are not best suited for the roles that they're assuming. And a CEO doesn't uh, do everything, but as a leader of the company, the CEO should recognize when the, the company is potentially veering off course. Now, I understand that before Steve Jobs died, he told Tim uh, that to make Apple his own. You know, don't think about what I would do, just do what you feel would be right for the company. This is what's concerning to me because I believe Tim Cook is doing what he feels is right for the company. And Tim Cook has done an amazing job, honestly, out of any of the executive staff that's still at Apple, I think Tim was the, the best person for the job. I mean, in terms of manufacturing processes and, and getting product from point A to point B and, and, and making you know uh, certain trade-offs, I think he's done well. I think he's done well enough. My concern is that Apple is now and in the future not the same Apple that would have brought Tim Cook to that position. And without other people in place, certain critical roles that need to be filled, Apple's just becoming yet another tech company with a different marketing message. And, you know, in, in, in looking at my notes, um, you know, given their tight control over everything, they, they act like a monopoly. And, and I'm not sure if they're really as much of a monopoly as they used to be. I mean, for years, as far as smartphones were concerned, it was pretty much Apple. And I know there are some Android fans out there who say, no, it was always Android. And I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm going to disagree with you there. Android started getting good right around Nougat. And now with Oreo at, at this time, uh, and, and it's, it's outpaced the quality of software and an, an operating system experience uh, that we had been accustomed to with Apple. So it's like they, they traded positions. So this, to me, in my estimation, has been just a recent change and continues to get better on that front. Um, but they, they've got some stiff competition in terms of quality. And that is a big deal. Like I see problems with Apple's products, not because the devices themselves are bad. Uh, it's just that I'm seeing problems that would exist on devices not made by a company that controls everything. So it's like the software team is not talking to the services team, is not talking to the hardware team, is not working together in conjunction to create a symphony. Instead, we have what we have today. We have a series of iPhones, a series of iOS products that, quite honestly, are running lackluster software. So it was like Apple created the hardware, no doubt about that. They're constantly upgrading it, uh, you know, giving us new features within the hardware itself, but... At the same time, the software is getting neglected, and uh, neglected specifically on iOS. I'm not even talking about Mac OS. You know, it's it's kind of getting dragged along, and it's still working just fine. That's not a complaint. I think Mac OS is definitely on a good trajectory. I, I'm 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 confident that they they're not going to do too much to mess it up. So it's it's kind of nice that Apple's not paying attention to the Mac right now. I know some people would disagree, but let's just kind of leave well enough alone because ain't too many things that are incredibly broken. Um as opposed to again their their flagship product, the the iPhone. So they're acting like they're the only company that can create a good experience and that's where I have an issue. It used to be the case, but not anymore. They control everything. Everything. And I think it's been a value it, 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 a check mark in app, the, 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 the positives of Apple's column I mean, because they had a chance to control the entire experience. They still have a chance to control the entire experience because they still control the entire experience. The problem is the entire experience that they are now controlling is falling apart. And without that critical piece in place, specifically software, quality control, the devices don't matter. And this is where I feel Tim has just lost sight of what brought Tim to the position that he's in. 
some people are going to agree, some people are, are going to disagree. But in my estimation, Apple has no true competition. And Apple f feels that way too. I mean, they got an immense amount of pride. They've, they've got a lot to be proud of, no doubt about that. But nobody else controls the entire experience, stem to stern. I guess a bigger question then is, does it really matter? For some, it never mattered, right? You, you don't care possibly, if you have one company manufacture the hardware, another company manufacture the software, another co company uh, handle the service, another company here handle the support, you know, it, it, you've got a smattering of companies, uh, you know, specifically for one particular product. And that has been a frustration point for me, it, or at least it has up until this point been a frustration because that's usually where communication breaks down. That's usually where you have a lackluster experience. It's usually been where Apple has been able to excel. But Apple has no uh, a true contemporary, which is maddening. So they don't have or necessarily see any reason to change. But the question is, is society changing? Are we changing? Uh, as 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 people who recognize the role of technology in our lives and and the value of technology in our lives, uh, not everybody needs a one thousand uh, dollar personal computer to carry with them. Yes, this is very much a PC. Uh, not like my first PC, a Commodore sixty four, C sixty four. Can't wait for that to get rebooted. It's it's coming. Like there's there's going to be a mini one made this year, and the next year it's going to be the full size. I'm waiting for the full size. I think. Um, so it's it's. To me, Apple feeling like it can't lose, or it's seeing that it can't lose because it, it has the iPhone. And it's not about market share, okay? I, I knew this even years ago. Inevitably, there would be more Android devices, a bigger user base for Android than there ever would be for iOS or, or iPhones. It, it, was, it was always going to be the case because you could just see the, the licensing strategy, just like uh, how, uh, you know, Microsoft, there would be more PCs than there may be Macs. It doesn't speak to the quality and it doesn't speak to the experience of, of either one of them. And, and either one of them has benefits and drawbacks. So it's not about losing market share. It's about losing sight about or losing sight of the company ethos that, that brought you to this point. That, 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 the, the success that you see is largely based upon the success that you brought, but it, it, it's, not, it's not happening anymore. Uh, and, and this has been something I've been beating a drum on for years. This is not a recent thing. Some people think that, you know, I'm just slagging on Apple over the past week or two, but uh, y'all may not be paying too much attention, as much attention as you think you are. And trust me, there's there's more to talk about, and I do, and I will, um, you know, not just in this channel, but certainly in TLDR. So if you don't like the things I'm talking about, do the AMA every day over in the, the Locker Gnome YouTube channel. Uh, it's not Apple's failing on its own, specifically, as much as it's the rest of the industry still bumbling around, with Apple having no contemporary, right? Um, you know, and, and even if we're not talking about devices, what they're doing with their stores, uh, I think is, is pretty neat. I mean, it, it is, it, 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 the store is potentially a destination, uh, but now it's, it's pretty commonplace and, and there's n not necessarily a value that's tied to being able to walk into a store, which for the most part is advertising. It's, it's, it's a free, free advertising. It's, it's a purchasing point. It's a support point. I think Apple's done a very good job. Um, you, Microsoft has tried, uh, Bless their hearts. Uh, not the same. But it's it's still waiting for someone to take the threat of Apple, and I use that word very loosely, seriously, and creating a, a comprehensive experience for the user. And this is where I guess I'm turning to Google because to really is nobody else that's the equivalent and seeing them just make mistake after mistake after mistake with customer experiences. Uh, and again, that's not speaking to the, the quality of Android as a, as a platform or the, the values of as a platform. It's talking about Google's general strategy to the consumer electronics marketplace. And it's just it's just different. And it feels like Google's still trying to find its way in the dark. And, and, and the rest of us are sitting here waiting. Um, because honestly, the, the, the Apple has no, uh, has no parallel. And I think that may end up hurting them. And it has certainly ended up hurting us as well as consumers. Um, so if there is a decline, it'll play out slowly, you know, with their abundance of, of resources. It won't happen overnight. Um, you know, 
it, it's not. I don't think the undoing of Apple in the, 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 the Apple's doomed because people aren't buying watches or upgrading iPads or because you've got a, an exploding battery or a factory underpour of oleophobic coating. Not not on this one. This is my. This is the seven. That's seven plus. That's be going. It's going to be going to Diana here in a, another a few hours. Um, it'll be a slow, steady decline, and I think people may end up realizing or wake up and realize that what Apple's doing is not as incredibly unique as it used to be and certainly not delivering the value for the price point that they're asking. And I'm not faulting Apple for for the, the, the price that they're asking. You can't. If you don't want to buy something, don't buy it. If you, don't, if you feel that something's expensive, okay, expensive is relative. You, but you see other companies also, you know, basically uh, uh, heaping on to uh, uh, users their version of a $1,000 uh, smartphone. So it, it's, it's going to be difficult, I think, for Apple to recognize where it's starting to show some weaknesses. And, and, and I think that's, that's where it, it ties back into quality control and design and how that design is pivotal to their experience. But they are now a laughing stock. With designers, certainly that I trust, um, you know, we see a, a cascading series of problems in software, and certainly now, and I've had I've had dreams about this, software and hardware. I had a dream last night. I really did. I swear, you're not gonna believe it. I never dream about tech, ever. And I had a dream about this. That I just I was just uh, appalled by what was rolling out. Like from Apple, and it, it, I mean, it's. It, I, am I taking it too personal? Sure, but you know what? This is a personal computer. It's on me, not twenty four seven exactly. Uh, but this is your personal computer. I don't care if you still call it a PC or, or not. I don't care if you still call it a smartphone or not. It's 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 very personal. So, you know, just just waking up and realizing that that Apple, under the direction of Tim Cook, may be veering off course very slowly. It's it's a it's a very slow moving off course. Tim, I don't believe, needs to step aside. I, I'm not ever, I don't think I'm going to call for that. I don't think anybody, I don't think anybody would. I think he's doing a fantastic job. I appreciate his philanthropic efforts. I appreciate the, the, the culture that he's trying to, uh, you know, build with an apple or rebuild with an apple. But at the same time, I think he needs to bring in new blood, uh, which probably isn't easy, uh, and new talent. And I think that is ultimately a, a response as to what what could Tim do? Uh, he, he needs to bring in new people and potentially in bringing in new people, maybe old people. I do believe, as I've said in, in recent live streams, that Scott Forstall needs to come back. If, if he doesn't need to come back, then a Scott, Scott Forstall type of person. The closest thing to a Steve Jobs protege. There's nobody else. Nobody else. Um, you know, and, and that's going to create rifts. It's going to create issues. It's going to create uh, some amount of chaos. But, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's like uh, uh, putting in a whole bunch of rocks into a tumbler uh, and, and spinning them around for a day or two, and then you, you pull out the polished stones. They go in rough, but they come out polished. It's, uh, it's a process. Um, and I understand that, that, that I, I don't understand. I know what I don't know, and I don't know the internal politics of the situation. All I know is that whatever was happening was working for quite some time or working out well enough. Um, and it may have been a balancing act, like, well, we got to hold on to, we got to hold on to these people in order to hold on to these people. got to let this pe person go. I don't know how that all played out. But without a Scott Forstall type of person at the helm of quality control and design, Apple's almost worse than any other tech company because it belie it still believes in the former sh shadow of itself instead of seeing Apple on its own for what it is. Apple's hubris is going to get in the way. Uh, if it's not S Scott Forstall, they need to find someone like a Matthias uh, uh, Duarte, like who's basically head of design with with uh, uh, with Google and Android. And some people don't like Material Design. I'll give Material Design this: it's got an ethos. And it's clean. It's cohesive. Uh, it, it, it certainly on just about any more modern Android device with running a, a plain old uh, Android install. It's it's clean. It's effective. It's responsive. Um, if if not a, a Matthias, uh, then maybe a, a Tony Murray. Tony, I've mentioned in the past. Uh, I don't know 
where he's present in the community, but I follow him on Twitter, T underscore Murray. Uh, he effectively seems to head or is, is basically responsible for uh, making Pixel an amazing experience from Google. Apple has no such person, uh, and it's not that any such person might not already exist within Apple or didn't once exist within Apple. It's just that they don't. They have good people at Apple. I have no doubt Phil Schiller is doing, for marketing, he's doing a pretty good job. Uh, uh, you know, Craig, Craig Federighi doing a pretty good job. I mean, they're definitely producing product. It's a question of fit and finish, quality control, uh, creating an experience that people love. And, 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 and I've alluded to that in the past as, as well, so I'm not going to dive too deep into that sentiment. Uh, you know, Tim, I believe, despite everything I've said, specifically in relation to, to his conversations that have been hearsay or, you know, out in, in, in the media, uh, Tim, I think, would be well served in, in relation to Apple and his roles at Apple to watch or rewatch so many Steve Jobs videos. Not to be Steve Jobs, because he, he, he can't be. He won't be. He ain't, Steve's never coming back. Because I don't think that's the right thing to do. But I think Tim would be wise to listen to the advice that Steve was laying down. And it's like every, just about every single old Steve Jobs video that I've seen uh, has been uh, eye-opening. Like, yeah, it's like, obviously, Steve Jobs gets it. Steve Jobs understands why I appreciated the things that Apple was doing. And it's like a radical departure from everything that Apple's doing. I mean, there have been videos where Steve has said outright, we're not going to talk about specs. We're not going to talk about megahertz and, and, and MIPS. You know, it, 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 I'm like, yeah, exactly. Thank you, Steve. It's not about the specs. Uh, you know, all the way through to even using that, the analogy that I brought up, you know, a few minutes ago, talking about uh, uh, his experience with a neighbor uh, talking about uh, rocks that go into a tumbler and then they come out polished. I mean, sometimes you need that. You know, all the way through talking about, you know, if you want to, you know, if you want to really do well in this industry, you have to control the hardware and the software. But, you know, I don't think Apple's controlling the software. I think the software is absolutely out of control. I think the design is lost. It's it's gone. Everything we see looks nice-ish, but Apple's like a cheap knockoff of itself. Why am I so emotionally invested? Because I see it for what it is, and other people don't, and it's just maddening that other people aren't talking about it. And it's not to say that everybody else isn't talking about it. There are other people talking about it, thankfully. But not enough. Not enough to, 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 to make an impact. And I think Tim, in watching some of these old Steve Jobs videos, maybe not all of them, you know, might, you know, recognize that the direction Apple's going is not the direction that it should be going for it to see continued success and for people to see and continue to see Apple for, for, for what it has done, what it is doing, what it, what it could be doing. Uh, you know, and the alternative to, to any of this, including, you know, uh, uh, Tim's not going to listen to me. I wouldn't expect he would. Uh, Apple's not going to listen to me. I wouldn't expect they would. Uh, but the alternative is that the Apple faithful begin to leave. And I'm not talking about knee-jerkish uh, responses like, oh, the iPhone sucks. I'm going to use Android. You know, that. What, what, what have I said before? Um, followers are fickle, but fans are forever. The problem is, is when you start uh, m not understanding what made someone a fan, you're going to have a disconnect, which, you know, I can talk of in terms of personal experience, like my personal brand, a lot of people have known me for my tech experience and, and, and opinions and perspectives, but that's not me. And I, I've, I've struggled with that because like me, I love a lot of things. I love talking about a lot of things. I assume a lot of roles in my life. Uh, but to me, a fan of Chris Perillo is a fan of Chris Perillo, not a fan of technology. Technology is just a, a subset. It's just a, a topic that I might talk about every so often, but not me. So I appreciate those who follow me specifically for tech, but I wouldn't necessarily consider them a Chris Perillo fan. Um, a Chris Perillo fan has been with me through thick and thin and, and recognized that I've changed over time and have needed to change over time and evolved and, 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 and maneuvered around industry problems that I can't control. All the more reason I've been grateful that those who have supported me on Patreon have supported me on Patreon. Those who uh, became a sub on Twitch to gain access to the Discord chat room became a sub on Twitch. Uh, you know, those who have thrown out super chat messages during live broadcasts have done the same. Anybody who supported me in, in any way, shape, or form, I've been incredibly grateful for. Recognizing 
that I'm not just a single topic. So I, I understand the frustration that's possibly existing within Apple, not realizing that they're not paying attention to the base of fans who have appreciated what Apple has done in the past that are starting to see that Apple ain't coming back. The Apple that you knew isn't coming back. So the alternative is that the Apple faithful start to leave, not just the, you know, fickle, you know, responses. I mean, seriously, like, okay, that's where I am. That's, 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 on, that's, that's where, I, that's what I am on the precipice of, which is maddening because it's like change that I'm being forced to do. And no one wants to be forced to change. Nobody wants that uh, thrust upon them. Absolutely not. Everything you've been seeing in me is like the analogy of, uh, you know, how would you boil a frog? Do you boil the water first and then throw the frog in? No, because then the frog feels it's hot and jumps right out, you know, versus acclimating it to the water, the conditions of the water, and putting the frog in water while it's fine, then just slowly turning up the heat until it's boiling. And that, to me, is, is that's, that's what Apple's doing. It's slowly turning up the heat. And I'm able, I feel, to recognize, I'm able to recognize a little more as to what's going on. And I kind of, at first I was kind of like with iOS seven, it was, it's been like this, like iOS seven, eight, nine, 10. It's been like, is it just me? Like, am I the only one really talking about this? And I still feel like I'm the only one talking about it on YouTube or just about, there are a few, uh, but, uh, I still, I, I feel better at least with this current cycle that I'm not the only person talking about this anymore, or at least in the same capacity. Um, I, I just feel like change is being thrust upon me and, and Apple isn't going to change its direction. So I, I feel I have very little choice apart from continuing to call out industry trends as I've seen them. This isn't about being right. Uh, it's just about, you know, uh, managing my own expectations and helping people understand kind of a little more of what's going on. And I don't even know everything. You're never going to hear me say that I know everything ever because I don't. As I said before, in this very video, there's more I don't know than what I do know. And if I didn't say that, well, I said it just now. I say a lot. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Mm. I needed that sip of green tea. I love you. I appreciate you. And may the force be with you.